Hi everyone, good morning. Um, some of you might remember the delivery to Pony lecture from last year, but um, it's your first time. Um, we're just gonna, uh, last night you should have received the grieving and um, spikes method just to review them so that when we um, transition into our small groups later, you'll be able to have a little bit of a point where it ends up with that. Uh, first, I'd just like to thank Dr. Willis and the rest of the um, faculty leaders for the Wellness Lecture Series. And then the other faculty um, uh, mentors today who are going to be helping with our small group sessions, Dr. Kim, Dr. Khan, Dr. Lang, and then um, Philip Burl and Chow, um, Frisch, and um, Sheriff Holly. So um, first, I uh, just we're going to give a background um, about the grieving. We're going to focus on the grieving mnemonic um, and talk about the nuances of both, when you would use both, and then we'll transition into uh, case vignette and then in with a um, brief debriefing. Um, the main objective uh, today is to give you the tools so you feel more equipped and confident to deliver difficult news. Um, and unfortunately, we know that right now that's um, part of our reality, um, and always, uh, but even more so recently. And also um, for junior residents as they transition to being an attending later, um, and that will be, be the primary person responsible for doing that. And then, um, so why else is this important? Um, really, there was a systematic review um, published in the Journal of the Association of American Medical College in 2018 that looked at um, different um, ways to practice this, whether it was lectures or small groups. And all um, of the reports really show that the only way to get better at it is to practice. And um, when you practice, you feel more confident. And how does that help us as physicians as well? Um, we actually, it's a very significant emotionally charged event. And um, it reduces our stress too when we're able to do this in a compassionate and empathetic way. Um, really lessens the both, both sides. And um, after that, we'll do the um, practice with it in small groups. Okay, so the grieving mnemonic. Um, this was actually developed by um, Sherry Hopwood, an emergency uh, medicine attending out of the University of North Carolina. Um, as part of a training program she developed, um, she developed the grieving death notification protocol, which was really a training manual um, aimed at emergency medicine physicians. And the goal was to help with the uh, death notification um, <laughs> and how um, to help standardize that. Um, and some of the um, most important parts of this, um, really some of the pitfalls at each step. Um, in the gather step, um, some of this stuff really during our current time, we're not going to be doing, when we do it in breakout sessions on Zoom, it's going to be more simulated as though it were like a telemedicine remote delivery of difficult news, which um, this is pr probably going to be part of a lot of people's reality coming up and just in general already. Um, so instead of looking out at the uh, breakout sessions as like a limitation, look at it as more of a chance to practice how this would be when you have no ability to be in person. Um, and, and so some of the things will be modified, but in general, um, if this were in person, um, you, you would want to not have a lot of family members. Um, well, you, the, the, the thing is, you want to make sure you have the important ones. So make sure you have the key players uh, there and not not, um, not leaving out anyone before you start. Um, and then also another pitfall is having too many family members um, and just causing chaos uh, overall. Um, also, before you leave, um, make sure that you yourself are mentally prepared to start this um, and that you overall like everything else going on in the ED before that, all the cases you had, just kind of have make sure those are um, any unresolved issues, just kind of get those taken care of so you actually have the mental capacity to, to, to deal with this. Um, and then under resources, one really important thing um, is just to um, kind of anticipate what could happen. Um, just having security around, you never know what could happen, um, different reactions, grief, anger, shock, people throw things, people become violent. So it's just nice to think about those things ahead of time um, and not having too many staff in the room. And then identify. Um, 
don't assume. So early on, don't assume certain people know certain things and who people are. Just really um, go through that as well. Um, and then uh, educate. Um, uh, try to avoid medical jargon. Just try to um, be as... It's really difficult, easier said than done, but um, trying as best as possible to just deliver it authentically and empathetically. And everyone will figure out what works best for them. Um, and then overall, just the rest of this, we can go on into. And um, as you saw last night, um, this is actually, Noah adapted this into a color version, which you guys can also look at. Um, Spikes was actually developed out of the oncology literature, um, and it was studied really uh, as best used for um, delivering difficult news to a patient um, for certain, like basically terminal diagnosis or um, actually, so it wasn't necessarily studied for the death notification. And although, uh, so why are like mnemonics, why are rubrics, why are models important? Really, it may seem counterintuitive, like using a model, using a rubric, it might seem as though like early on you're thinking this, wouldn't I be more robotic if I were using a rubric? But actually the benefit of using rubric is so you can get all the nuts and bolts sorted out before so that then when you are delivering this news, you're really able to be present and you're able to um, take out all the, the back story part of it and just be present, mindful, and be able to really focus on um, communicating, listening, and using those skills to help um, deliver it more empathetically and often, authentically. Um, so this is just basically almost like a pictorial model of what's actually happening during the exchange. Um, really, most important, understand the feelings of the family member or the patient and then being able to communicate that back um, and letting them know you understand what they're feeling. And it's really a therapeutic dialogue. Um, so just before we get into the small groups, I just wanted to go through um, a, a paper that, so published in the um, Journal of Trauma and Acute Care Surgery. It outlines the qualities that family members most value when doctors or nurses communicate bad news. So the way this was set up, they administered a survey to family members um, of trauma patients who were dying in the emergency department or the intensive care unit. And the survey tool consisted of 14 elements um, that surveyed family members. Um, and it was graded as they were supposed to grade the um, from least to most important. And the four most important factors were found to be the attitude of the person delivering the news, the clarity of the message, their feeling of privacy and then their ability to answer questions. So just keeping these things in mind when we um, go into this work. Um, so for the, the way this is going to work, um, we're going to do, it looks like one small group in person. There's about 12 people here. And then on Zoom, looks like probably 50 to 60. So we'll do um, one small group here and then four on Zoom. And the way this is going to work, uh, I'm going to email you guys right now this uh, case. I didn't want to email it ahead of time because I wanted it to be fresh um, and new for you guys. And what we'll do is um, the resident leader is going to be the um, family member. And we're going to have one volunteer in each group, be the um, senior resident or attending, simulating um, delivering difficult news to the family member. And then the faculty um, mentor in each group is gonna give feedback at the end, um, like a, a little bit of a debriefing and how they thought it could have gone better or also offer their experience with doing this. Okay, so you should see in your email, let me know if you guys didn't get it, um, the case packet. It's gonna have the case if you want to go to case two. Um, this is the one we're gonna use today. And like I said, um, here's just an overview of um, what we're going to do. We're going to focus on the grieving method. And then in the packet, you'll also see some um, of the tools for debriefing. And then at the end, if there's time, um, there's some debriefing questions to kind of guide the closure. Thanks, guys. And we'll, um, we'll get into the small groups now.
All right, for in person, uh, Surya and Dr. Khan, you guys can get started. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just for everybody on Zoom. Uh, just give me a second. I'm going to try to make a breakout room as soon as possible. Sophia. Yes. Hey, I don't know if Dr. Stetz and Dr. Wolfram are on Zoom. Are they present in conference? Yes. Okay, perfect. Sorry, Hi. I put my, my daughter. Yes, I'm here. Hey. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, <laughs> I would have just, just told you to take care of it. So. <laughs> you got it. Scared the dog yesterday. I threw a box. Is this the case for I'm working it. I'm working it. I see. <laughs> People set up everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but the reason, so the thing is that is, my preference would be that I would like the seniors to see how the agent is giving that. So this is my preference. When I was when I was training previously, and we were in the and we were being asked in this situation, a lot of the families didn't like it when the giant medical came in with an attending, a fellow, two residents, like a whole group of people, so that they wanted only essential people to discuss it with them. And then, so yeah, so you're correct in that you're not right. the army for but what if what if only the intern is on the you know, yeah, we the it says up there because the intern is or so my preference would have been that if there is a senior person who wants to go in first, I would give that person the opportunity just like we do with advanced procedures or senior person to go on there. If that's person, Shane, how did this is a uh, Jane Kim? How how did you feel? Senior, I would prefer to know that my senior would know I had a this, especially more important because everyone had that preference. Your intern is now a senior who would have never given a senior a preference. Like seeing someone like your senior is okay, I have an intern, really. They're an intern. I want my senior to be there. Right, and so at some point, your intern can be seen as a character. I agree, but that's why I would offer it to the senior and say, I want to be part of the team. I didn't, how did some of the watching feel? Watching Shane, you know, try to break to Michelle O'Connor that her son had died, and she wasn't having it. I definitely agree with you, Nick. I think there are definitely some moments where I totally resonated with that experience of like, oh, I wish I didn't say that, you know, like take it back, you know. That's why I definitely agree. <laughs> Anyone else? How did other people feel watching this unfold? Drop to the ground. 
I'm the one single person in there with one security guy outside. Uh, okay, I'm sure. So, I so you need to remember that all the parts of that. We had a mother who had a bit of fun, decided she's going to pass out and stay behind her, and all of a sudden I'm under me. I was trying to pick her up because I went to catch her, and the way I caught her was drunk, break her over. We do have to keep it in mind. Maybe you just come into this kind of very kind of concrete. And that's good. We're going to have a bad chisel away, break it down, because we do take that out of you now. Just sort of I definitely agree with you guys. There's many things that Shane did really awesome. Um, one thing, you know, finding that 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 safe space. Especially when you have the people that you have to be in the group 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 that you have do it in like very natural space. So I think that is like another great thing that you can do. But I'll be honest. Any other positive things that I think I'm going to change it? Well, I'm going to say that. I just like that. I think that's what I'm going to say. Already. Right, so I'm not. Maybe some of the people might be saying are on the really breakout room. You have that. You're like, wow, that that worked really well for me. That. Right, so Why didn't you do the part? Um, 
I have all the way to I have all the way to the hospital. They can provide a company that has a so, so Shane, if you had to roll time back and do this again, yeah, uh, what would you do? Uh, yeah.
So how do people feel about what um, David just said about like someone who's not in the hospital probably driving, uh, hearing that their their family member might die? I mean, it always makes me nervous. Um, but it's balanced against telling the truth and, and being honest, right? So how do how do people uh, how do people here in this group reconcile that? Or feel about that.
So I've had that happen. I've had that happen, and the only saving grace was somebody else was driving the parent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 Great job, Gabby. Sorry, cut us off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, okay, we just I just want to hand it over to Surya to kind of just see how everybody felt about that or had any questions or comments. Uh, so go ahead, Surya. Hey, guys, I know probably some of those groups were in the middle of stuff, so if anyone wants to um, as a group to share uh, um, yeah. in your actual yeah. group, right. um, I'll uh, um, discuss them all today. So feel free if you have any comments um, or how you're um, how you're grouping, like you share. Yeah. 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 Hey guys, great. Um, thanks for joining us and doing this role play with all of us um, resident and attending facilitators. Um, with that said, you know, um, you know, things are wrapping up with COVID and whatnot. And I was just looking over the UHB clinical COVID management resources that Conrad had sent out. And if I don't know if everyone had looked through it, but at the latter half of it, there's a goals mm -hmm. of care discussion section. And spikes grieving is helpful, and those are useful modalities to break bad news to family members. But um, also, you know, I don't know what modality we're going to be able to use with families moving forward, you know, either in informing them about bad news in person, via Zoom, via WhatsApp, via, via a phone call. But um, the goals of care discussion section of this UHBED COVID management is really um, very thorough and I think very helpful for anyone else who's going to encounter this situation. Yeah, perfect. Thank you for sharing this. I also, in the email, I also um, sent a document that's um, basically an overview of the death notification protocol, too, that's on Clinical Monster. So, using all those resources. Um, um, and just referencing them and practicing and figuring out what works best for everyone. Um, and yeah, that's a very good distinction. Um, goals of care discussion, um, as part of that, really goes with delivering difficult news and really um, um, figuring out how to make it work for you and how to um, practice it. So if um, no one else has any other comments, um, we'll move on to the next lecture. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody.